If you're looking to do a live stream with multiple cameras, there's essentially three different ways that you could do it. And in this video, I'll be breaking down those three different ways and talking about the pros and cons of each so that you know which one you should do to conduct your live streams. Let's get it. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Omar Takori with Think Media and this video is sponsored by StreamYard. StreamYard is how we do our live streams here at Think Media as well as our private Facebook groups. And I just love that StreamYard makes live streaming so, so easy with the ability to brand your live streams as well as do transitions really easily. And more than anything, do a lot of the heavy lifting. And so if you wanna check out StreamYard for yourself, be sure to check out the link down in the description below. But the first way to do a multi-cam live stream is by actually building building out a custom PC and adding capture cards. Capture cards give your computer an HDMI input so that you could plug in anything sending an HDMI signal into it and use it as a source. Sean on the Think Media team built out a custom PC with four HDMI inputs that all go into one capture card. And when you use a device like the Elgato Stream Deck, you can actually switch between your various inputs. And this allows Sean to now have up to four cameras or even uh, how he uses it with three cameras. And then he can add a fourth input as needed. Now the con to doing it this way definitely just has to be the cost. Building out a PC is not a cheap task. And that's why I wanted to talk about the second way that you can actually achieve multiple cameras for a live stream. And that is using USB capture cards. This is potentially the cheapest way you can achieve this because you can buy capture cards as low as $25 on Amazon. And a lot of the resources and things will be linked down in the description below if you wanna check out specific things I'm talking about in this video. Now the potential con to using multiple USB capture cards in this manner is that it limits you with the amount of softwares that would allow you to change over in real time to those various different inputs. If you plan on using something like OBS or Ecamm Live, you could definitely work around some things, but that's kind of it right now as far as I know. But we like using StreamYard to do our live streams. And currently, a lot of platforms like StreamYard doesn't allow you to change between different video inputs because you know your USB ports are different USB ports. And so you can't seamlessly switch over to different angles like you would want to, especially while doing a live stream. Now the third way and my personal favorite way because this is how I do my live streams is using a HDMI switcher for your live streams. Now this is a hardware piece that doesn't have to be built into a computer and you can actually use it with a laptop or whatever computer you currently have. And getting something like the Blackmagic A10 Mini or the Feel World Live Pro L1, which are switchers that come in right at about $300, allows you to just plug in your cameras or your devices into it. And with just a single USB cable that plugs into your computer or laptop, you can now switch between your different cameras. My favorite thing about this route is number one, how simple it is to truly set up, but secondly, is how tactical it is. I personally like to press buttons when I'm switching angles because it gives me a sense of security, especially if I'm doing a live stream. And you know, really the Blackmagic A10 Mini is definitely the more popular one, but I also wanted to bring to your attention the Feel World Live Pro because it does have some features that the Blackmagic A10 Mini does not. Now, as far as how these compare to each other physically, first and foremost, uh, the footprint, you have the Blackmagic A10 Mini that's a little bit more sleeker and lower, but longer uh, than the Live Pro by Feel World, whereas the Live Pro is more squared and comes up a little bit more higher than it does go wider. As far as the various ports you get, you're gonna get four HDMI inputs as well as one HDMI output on both of these. The Blackmagic ATEM has two microphone inputs, whereas the Feel World has one audio in and one audio output. They both have ports for ethernet, and I'll talk about what you can control with that. And then lastly, they both have USB out, with the ATEM Mini being a USB-C out, and the Feel World being a USB 3.0 out. In regards to the user interface, the Feel World kind of is more geared toward a beginner, which is nice. And really the biggest difference is the fact that it has a screen, has a, a two inch screen on the switcher itself. So you can monitor what's going into each input literally on the device itself, which is super nice. And then it also has the T-bar that allows you to also switch between two different angles and maybe add a transition if you'd like to. Whereas the A10 Mini, you'll just have to select what you want it to do when you hit whatever angle you want to switch to. 
And so at face value, the feel world just looks easier to use for beginners versus the Blackmagic. But as a personal user of the Blackmagic ATEM, I actually think it is pretty easy to use. And more than anything, it's literally as simple as plugging in your HDMIs and then plugging the USB into your computer and then selecting it as your source. And then really the final differentiator between these two is the softwares that come with this. The Blackmagic has the ATEM control and Fear World has their own software as well. And what's cool about the Blackmagic ATEM control is it, it really allows you to get a little bit more pro when it comes to adjusting things like your you know, audio delay. If your camera and your mic aren't synced up, you can adjust that. You can actually you know, match the colors of your cameras or tweak it a little bit. As far as the Feel World software goes, it's a little bit more dated in my opinion and uh, not that desirable to work with. Um, what is cool is that you can change what you see on the HDMI out and the USB out, whether you wanna see the program monitor, like where you could see all your angles, or if you wanna see the actual feed uh, that is being selected at the time, you can actually determine what that is inside of the software, which is cool. But either way, both of these switchers communicate to computers uh, for the software specifically with the ethernet cable plugged in to your computer or laptop. However, you do not need to do that. You can literally open up from the box, plug it into power, plug in your HDMI, and you'll be ready to go. And so those are three different ways that you can do a multi-camera live stream with your current setup. And really, I think it's crazy how easy it is to do nowadays. And people are always amazed whenever I switch between my cameras because it's still kind of new to see somebody live streaming and being able to just show multiple angles during a live stream. And so if you got value in this video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you wanna check out a video I did where I go a little bit deeper with the Blackmagic ATEM series, uh, because they have different tiers that allow you to do certain different things. I personally have the Blackmagic A10 Pro ISO, which does incredible things, uh, but be sure to check that out by clicking or tapping the screen, or check out another video by clicking or tapping the screen. I can't wait to see you in a future one. Peace.